welcome back to the first episode of the Activate Body, Live Your Best Life podcast. Today, we are talking about how to exercise specifically with the purpose of slowing down the aging process. To understand how the body ages, I think is important first before figuring out how exactly we're going to use exercise to counteract this. A lot of times we consider the effects of aging to be something that's going to happen no matter what. You hit a certain age and certain things stop working the same way. You hit a certain age and your metabolism slows down. You hit a certain age and your joints just don't work the way they used to. But that's kind of missing an in-between step. A lot of times, the things that happen to our body as we age are not because we aged, but rather how we aged. Things sometimes change a bit when we progress through life. For example, you may find that you are logging less steps as a 50-year-old than you did as a 10 year old. Because when you're 10 years old, you're outside playing with your friends, you're moving around. And when you're 50, you've got a job, and maybe it requires you to be seated for eight, nine, or 10 hours a day. You don't have friends that wanna go to the playground with you anymore. So the opportunities change. It's, it's more a matter of our environment and the choices we're making rather than what's starting off internally. So understanding that by changing the stimulus to the body of our environment by changing our activities, we can adjust or slow down or occasionally even reverse the effects that those changes would bring about from aging. So here's a, a really easy example. Imagine if you bought new tires for your car and after a little while, these tires start to ride out of alignment just slightly. Now, when you bought these tires, they are proofed for 5,000 miles. But once they're out of alignment, you just kept riding with them out of alignment. Now, it doesn't mean that one day later you're going to have a problem with your tires, but it does mean that they're going to grind down or wear out on the edges more than they were intended to. And it means they might not last exactly 5,000 miles anymore. But if you regularly take care of your tires, and you regularly have your alignment adjusted, then you can get your 5,000 miles out of the tire, maybe even more. And so the human body is the same way. So we have to understand that to prevent the effects of aging or to slow down the effects of aging, we have to exercise in a concerted manner that is designed to introduce to our body the same environmental stimuli that we perhaps we have received when we were younger. So we wanna think of exercise as a rehearsal for life an opportunity to do the different motions that we want our body to be able to continue to do. The body operates in a very ruthless, use it or lose it type mentality. It goes into effect in our 20s and lasts our entire life. And what that means is if we are regularly asking our body to do a certain activity, it will do everything it can internally to facilitate that. So if you regularly ask your body to climb a lot of stairs, your body will pretty effectively make sure that you can climb a lot of stairs. It'll maintain the joint systems, ligaments, the musculature, and so on, so you can do that regularly. But if you don't climb stairs regularly, your body says, well, climbing stairs is not something I have to do very often. Thus, why should I devote any resources to maintaining the ability to climb stairs? I don't need it. So it gets rid of it. And we start to lose our strength or our balance, joint capabilities to do that thing, in this case, climbing stairs. So we want to make sure first and foremost that your exercise program is not about getting your heart rate up. It's not about burning calories. It's not about how heavy a weight can you lift. Rather, it's about making sure the basic motions that the human body needs to be able to do on a regular basis are represented. So what are these motions? So we've got squats, right? The ability to get down and back up off the floor. We've got our hinges, the ability to lean forward to pick something up while the back stays supported and strong. We've got our ability to pull things towards us with our arms and then the ability to push things away. And there's a few others as well, but those are sort of the four big ones that we'll focus on for today's conversation. So we wanna make sure that we are regularly asking the body to do those four things. So the first thing we take a look at is, can we do those things? Forget number of reps, Forget how heavy the weight is we're gonna use or the pacing, just can we do that? For example, if I wanna press something up overhead and my arm just doesn't go that way, or if it goes that way it hurts, that's a problem. The solution is not going to be just grabbing a heavier weight or just forcing it or pushing through the pain. Rather to identify why is it painful or why does it not go that way? This might entail reaching out to a physical therapist. It might entail stretching. This might entail working with a personal trainer to learn the proper technique to drive up overhead. So the first of our base foundation, this pyramid becomes, can I just get into the position? Can I do the thing once? If yes, then we proceed to, can I do it repeatedly? Okay, so if I could do this just once perfectly, can I do it 10 times in a row perfectly? 
Does my shoulder stay in the right position? Do I understand what the right position for my shoulder even is? Once we can do it repeatedly with good technique and good position, then we can get into, well, can you do that 10 times in a row while you hold this implement? Challenge the system that much further. And so all we're doing, again, is just rehearsing that motion over and over and over with different ways to challenge it or make it uh, stimulating. So then the body understands, oh, I have to regularly do this. I better maintain the tissues required to do that thing. And that's all we're trying to do when it comes to exercise is make sure those are represented. So it's not uncommon for a workout routine designed with what we like to call ortho longevity in mind. You might not feel tired by the end. It's not designed to wear you out. It's not designed to make it the most challenging thing in the world. Rather, we're just teaching the body. We're rehearsing. We're reminding it of different positions it needs to be able to get into and out of on a regular basis. And then using things like weights and reps and pacing just as a way to make it just challenging enough. Because if the body is presented with something it can do on a regular basis and it can do it just fine as is, it says, well, why should I change? I can already do that right now. Now that's gonna be great if our ability is just to maintain status quo, but if we want to improve our ability to do it, then we have to challenge the body a bit further. So we put this all together and what we end up with then is a workout format that plays well for our ability to get in and out of positions to ensure that it's challenged in a manner that is still doable, but at the same time demonstrates to the body that it's, this is a position it's going to have to do regularly. So the second component we'll look for is making sure that all these positions are represented regularly in a workout. So rather than having a day where we're just doing legs or just doing arms, our objective is to include all of that in every workout. Sometimes we'll encounter someone who says, uh, yeah, but I kind of like my legs the way they are. My, my legs are fine. Thus, there's, there's no need to do any leg exercises. To which I would counter, that's exactly why we need to do leg exercises. Remember, aging degradation begins uh, in our 20s. And so understanding that the body is never going to stay put. From one day to the next, it's constantly moving towards entropy. Sometimes faster, sometimes slower. But there's always, if you think of it as a river, there's, the current is always flowing one direction towards aging. So if we take stock of where we are today and we say, yeah, I, I like my body the way it is right now in terms of its capabilities. I don't need to run five marathons or climb a mountain. I'm good where I am right now. Excellent. Understand that without any stimulus, we likely won't be in that same condition tomorrow. It would be slightly worse. And certainly in a year from now. And most certainly in three years from now and so on. So if we're using my analogy of the river again, if we're floating here and we say, I like where I am in the river right now. Excellent. Well, because there's a current, if you don't start paddling today, by tomorrow, you're going to be further down the river. So using exercise, not as a way to institute change in the body so that it is in a different state. Like, right, that's the classic example of, I want to lose weight or I want to get stronger. I want to get bigger, I want to get smaller, I want to be a better climber, I want to be a better rider. Those are sort of the classic examples. We say, hmm, I want my body to be able to do something that it can't do today, so I guess I better start exercising. And that's fine. But we need to remember that if we like our body where it is today, exercise is required to prevent change away from that. So the only time not exercising becomes an acceptable uh, solution is if we say, not only do I like where I am today, I'm totally content to be worse off moving forward. Understanding that that current is going to be working every day against us, and if we choose not to paddle to the contrary, we will go further down the river. And again, the good news is this doesn't require any extreme amount of intensive exercise. On the contrary, exercise for longevity is usually a bit slower paced. It's more deliberate and it's more cerebral. We don't get to sort of turn our brain off and just think, go, 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 no pain, no gain, more is better. Rather, it's being very aware of the minutia of how we're doing the exercise. So rather than using an outcome-based objective saying, okay, do this exercise 10 times or for 20 minutes or whatever it might be, instead focusing on how we do it and saying, hey, do this exercise like this and we can provide a goal of 10 times or for 20 minutes, but that becomes secondary. Because anytime we're doing an exercise incorrectly or with bad technique, then that's reinforcing things in the opposite direction. So all exercise is stimulus, but it's not all going to be positive stimulus. We need to make sure the exercise that we're selecting to do is done in a way that's reinforcing good position, good technique, so the body is more apt to do it that way 
when you're out on your own. I'll go back to my initial example of uh, getting up and down off the ground. So there's a million and one ways you can get yourself from the floor to a standing position. Some of them are super efficient, some of those are pretty awful, and some are somewhere in between. There's no definitive, this is the right way and everything else is incorrect. Rather, it's a spectrum of sort of more efficient, less efficient, more ideal, less ideal. Every time we do anything with the body, there's a million ways we could do it, right? If I need to get up and on, off the ground, I can lean on my heels and put my, my hips on the ground. I can drop down to one knee first. I can sort of roll on to my side. So I've got lots of options. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we understand what types of positions are going to be non-detrimental to the body. As an example, if you can imagine me trying to get off the floor, if I were to sort of twist over sideways and get up on my toes and turn my knee in and do all sorts of weird pretzely stuff, that might get me off the floor, but that might not have been the ideal or optimal technique or position for my body. I might have stressed out some ligaments a little bit or some musculature. I might have tweaked a nerve while I'm doing that. So the first thing we want to look at is are, are we doing anything in a way that's actually making things worse for the body because that doesn't really serve anything. So once we eliminate what those things are, then we have what I would call sort of a neutral approach. I mean, okay, it's not hurting the body, it's not helping the body, and it gets the job done. And that's fine for now. But then we can look at sort of the other end of the spectrum and say, well, what if we actually did it in a way that helped the body? A way that most efficiently leveraged our strength, a way that made us most likely resistant to injury along the way. And if we can understand what that technique requires, what that positioning looks like by rehearsing it in our workouts regularly, then we can come back and make sure that we're executing on that on a regular basis, right? We practice it. It's like learning a new dance move or something to that effect where you have to go slow at first, practice it, practice it until it gets right, then you can go a little faster. And ultimately you're able to more reliably demonstrate that exact technique when you're out in the real world. So this is just a, a basic run through of how we want to approach uh, exercise with an ortho longevity focus, right? The idea of preventing aging, making sure that we're focused on the technique rather than the outcome, making sure that everything we're doing is focused on including some sort of mindfulness as to, it's not just a matter of, did I get down and back up again? Did I take the weight from here to here? But how did I do it? Am I doing it in a way that's pain-free, in a way that's optimized, and in a way that's mindful enough that I can take it with me the way I step outside into the real world and try and just sort of not to exercise or, or to, to work out, but just load up the groceries, unpack the car, things of that nature. I hope this is helpful. We'll come back next week. Thanks so much for your attention and to your health.